And here is the irony and the tragedy of what's happening today. That in lamenting the loss of Andalusia, Osama bin Laden is bemoaning a civilization that was the very opposite of all he stands for. That for him, for the Taliban and other fundamentalists, there's but one book, the Quran. That instead of joining hands as their ancestors did with the followers of Jesus and the people of Moses, two figures the Quran recognizes along with Muhammad as God's prophets, that instead they want to kill Christians and Jews and expel them from their midst. The crowds that have turned out in the streets of Muslim countries in support of Bin Laden see it differently. It's, it's not war against terrorists, it's war against Muslims. A Western war, not against terrorists, but an attack on Muslims. That's why so many Muslims regard Bin Laden's call for a jihad, a holy war, as legitimate. The Quran, after all, authorizes wars of self-defense. They have seen fellow Muslims being killed by Christians in Bosnia, in Kosovo, and in Chechnya, and by Jews in the Holy Land, and by Hindus in Kashmir. That Muslims too killed others, they prefer to ignore. They got about 50,000 over long Muslims look at US troops in Saudi Arabia, at the sanctions strangling Iraq, and the current American and British attacks on Afghanistan, and what many see is a new period of Muslim suffering at the hands of Christendom, a new crusade. The crusades of the 12th and 13th centuries, military invasions of the Holy Land cloaked as religious pilgrimages were exceedingly bloody affairs. The local Muslims, Christians, even Christians and Jews were horrified at the behavior of the European crusaders in the Middle East. And of course it reached a climax with the taking of Jerusalem when the crusaders uh, uh, entered Jerusalem, they slaughtered um, Muslims, uh, Jews, anyone they could find and uh, the uh, record of those uh, terrible events uh, is available to us where they wrote that uh, when the knights rode into Jerusalem uh, they, had, uh, they, they had blood up to their knees uh, on, on horseback. It was a terrible slaughter. But there is another thing Muslims are aware of about the Crusades that for all their long suffering in the end they repelled the West and won and that this victory eventually led to a new round of Muslim expansion, this time into the heart of Europe. It was the Ottoman Turks who now took up what the Arabs had started. In 1453, they captured the capital of the Eastern Christian Empire, Constantinople. They renamed it Istanbul, turned Saint Sophia, Christendom's biggest church, into a mosque, and the city into a new glittering center of Islam. From Istanbul, the Turks invaded Europe through the Balkans. And just as in the west, the Arabs were retreating from Spain, in the east, the Ottomans advanced into Central Europe until they were stopped at the gates of Vienna. But from then on, it was downhill for the Ottoman Empire and for Islam as a whole. By the 17th, 18th century, you are beginning to see a falling away, you are beginning to see a decline, uh, corruption in the elite, um, uh, confusion in the elite, and you are beginning to see the emergence of the Ottomans, the, uh, of, of the Turks, as the sick man of Europe. Meanwhile, technologically and economically, Christian Europe, mainly Western Europe, was taking off. By the um, uh, late 19th century, uh, Europe was exploding all over the world as imperialists, as colonists, uh, its armies everywhere, its um, industries everywhere, its priests everywhere. Everywhere in the lands Islam had conquered across three continents, everywhere where Muslims for centuries had ruled, the European powers took over until finally, in the First World War, what little remained of the Ottoman Empire collapsed too. And with it, as bin Laden continually reminds Muslims, went the last of their power and their pride. Our nation, uh, from uh, since nearly 80 years, is tasting this uh, 
uh, humility. Uh, its uh, sons are killed, and it's uh, and nobody answers the call. <laughs> That message of humiliation that whips up crowds may be dressed up as a battle between Islam and Christianity. It is, rather, more struggle within Islam itself, says Islamic scholar John Vole. It's a conflict between visions of the virtuous life, the conflict between uh, modes of clothing for women in particular, for example, or uh, in terms of how uh, open you can have a society uh, for stirring up opposition. This is not a confrontation between Islam and Christianity. It is a conflict between modernity and tradition. In most Islamic countries, the traditional rules of life have not changed enough to provide the social and political freedoms that modern societies require. In frustration, millions have turned to what is most comforting, and that is the past. Many people, again, in the Muslim world, uh, living in this, in the past, uh, and living in the, uh, confronting the reality of the present, uh, would say that once we ruled the world, once we were the world conquerors, once we were people the world respected, and look at our present lot, and they would dream that one day this would all uh, return to Islam. The dream of Islam regaining the greatness of its power and glory by turning back the clock is a powerful one. But Islam grew great by going forward, not back, by building on the teachings of the ancient Greeks and Judaism and Christianity. And the progress of knowledge Islam brought to the world in turn helped spark the Renaissance in Christian Europe, and with it, a better future. To build the future on a distortion of the past, as Osama bin Laden and other fundamentalists hope to do, is an impossible dream, and also a dangerous one. Because if the passion of fundamentalism should ever escalate into a clash of civilizations, it would be a disaster for all of humanity, and not least, Ian, for the people of the Koran. Thanks, Joe. Next.